Hey everybody, welcome back. It is the Rasball Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am beat on, joined as always by the fantasy master Lothario himself, Gray Albright. How's it going over there, Gray? Hey, what's going on there, beat on? A, a, a nice, uh, nice wardrobe selection you got there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, it, it felt like the right day for it for some reason. <laughs> um, maybe just because our seasons might have died yesterday, depending on on your teams and who you had on them because uh it's it's been a bad injury week gray so i'm just uh maybe maybe this is just the the morning of of season of seasons past now <laughs> yeah i actually uh full disclosure uh umpire pat holberg uh bet that we would both wear the same shirt and I, he actually was nice enough to cut me in on it so <laughs> You found the, the shadiest book you could you find. Have, Take that one. Yeah, you should have worked out a side pot with him. <laughs> yeah, you know, it would have been would have been good to get that information from you, you know, just so that I could have worked that out. But I appreciate the help, Gray. Uh, as usual, I uh, I make nothing, and Gray just benefits. That's, uh, <laughs> that's that's how this relationship works. It's okay. Um, you know, it's, it's basically like, uh, you know, happy bladed father's day. It's a lot of lot, like father son relationships for, uh, for a long time growing up, you know, just a one way relationship. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm your father. <laughs> I'm, your, I'm your daddy. I, uh, you know, yeah. no, dude, I, I'd be the one getting stuff. I, I feel like it's the other way. I'm, I'm the dad. I do all the shit, get no benefit other than just like you getting yeah. everything that you, you know. That's fair. You know what? Be done. You're my daddy. <laughs> I uh, so uh, for people who didn't hear, uh, there's a, another gambling scandal. Which actually, I mean the uh, the first one was the most high profile, obviously because of Otani was involved. Uh, not involved. <laughs> I didn't say that. Don't 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 sue me. Um, uh, team uh, o- o- team Otani. Uh, then the the second uh, gambling scandal, the uh, Tuco Pe- Tuco <laughs> Tuku Tuco Petito uh, Marcano. Uh, totally said that correctly. Um, that was. <laughs> That was prob- probably the, uh, uh, the the scandal that was the, the least talked about, but actually was probably the the worst for baseball because actual players were involved. Um, and then the latest scandal this weekend was umpire Pat Holberg, uh, who – I believe was one of the actually good umpires in baseball. Like his, uh, he was always one that, that called a really good game. I think he actually in the world series, he, he called a perfect game. Uh, didn't get one behind home plate. That is didn't get one ball or strike, uh, incorrect for the entire world series game. Um, so, and this scandal, I believe is the, the, the prelude to the point where things get really bad. <laughs> this is, this feels like the precipice when MLB actually gets into a real, a real problem. If umpires are now caught gambling, uh, like before it was like the players are bad. Absolutely. Uh, but you know, marginal players who didn't really have an effect on the games. Okay. Actual umpires now, yeah. This this feels like a a slow moving scandal that is going to just erupt at some point soon. I I I get this feeling that this is not the <laughs> this doesn't feel like the end. This feels like the beginning. Yeah, I mean, just the the prevalence of uh, sports gambling and just I mean, it's been made you know more and more legal. Um, I, I, you know, the, uh, the discipline has been talked about because, uh, comparatively to, you know, a lifetime ban, it's, uh, it feels like a little bit of a a slap on the wrist here for, for Hobart, but we'll see what's happening because it's not, it's not settled yet. Um, it feels wrong that the people who are supposed to be officiating the game aren't going to be 
held accountable to the rules that this seal this feels uh it feels weird gray i, I mean but maybe that's just uh, where we where we are right now yeah yeah no definitely i you know i i also i kind of wonder with like uh you know umpires if like because uh, supposedly he didn't gamble on baseball that's like so he's he was yeah, caught sure. gambling but not on baseball so I kind of wonder, like, I don't know this. I'm sure it's written out somewhere. Maybe you know. Uh, but, like, what is – what's a an umpire – like, because players can gamble on, non, on non-baseball sports. So can umpires not gamble at all? Or are they allowed to gamble in the offseason? <laughs> I wonder – Honestly, I'm kind of wondering because you mentioned how like the prevalence of gambling, and I wonder like in the uh, the 1930s, like right after like temperance, and uh, you know, right after uh, <laughs> Nucky from the Boardwalk Empire <laughs> got all the booze, <laughs> and it was uh, legalized across the country. I wonder if uh, like MLB had problems with like players suddenly like showing up at the games drunk because of because alcohol was now legal um because uh you know like right now we're seeing a point in in like you know history where gambling has really become you know second nature uh associated with uh baseball in all sports really so you know at, at a certain point in the 30s alcohol was the same way where it was like oh you know everyone's you know everyone's drinking like why can't i you know why can't i play you know first base uh for the red stockings <laughs> drunk <laughs> or whatever i mean there there must have been a lot besides mickey mantle there must have been a lot of players who were you know showing up drunk to games <laughs> when it was first legal so um, I don't know. I, I just it's curious that at a certain point, like obviously uh, alcohol wasn't you know illegal for players. It wasn't illegal for them to be drunk <laughs> on the field, uh, which you know some players are probably still showing up to games drunk. But uh, no, I just but uh, gambling is illegal for them at least. So I do kind of wonder like. It feels like, again, this feels like the beginning and not the end. Like, it feels like there's going to be, at some point in the near future, we're going to hear a a story about, like, you know, some all-star player who was caught gambling. Like, that feels, it feels headed that way. Like, it really does. It doesn't, this does not feel like, oh, you know, just like one-offs. Yeah, to answer your question, um, Umpires can, they, they're the same rules that the players go by. So you can make legal bets. So, like through apps or through sports books on other sports. It's when you go through non legal oh, channels or maybe bet on your sport gotcha. that there are issues. I see. I so, mean, Holberg, so, Holberg was, uh, he was using a, a bookmaker then or something. I would assume he was using a bookie. If yeah. he said he wasn't betting on baseball, um, I personally find it kind of hard to believe that you're not betting on the sport that you know best. But okay, sure, well, yeah. well you can physically well, control that, and, and know that. the people umpiring and like I, I watched. Don't know. The, uh, I mean, I watched the documentary, uh, but I don't follow basketball. You, I think you do, right? Like there was a yeah. there was a ref who got busted. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe baseball will avoid this getting worse. But it really, it feels a little bizarre that like this is a third gambling scandal in the matter of like you know what is it three months now? In three months, there's there's been like one gambling scandal a month. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll uh, you know cool off at some point. But it feels like it's getting progressively worse now anyway we, we should move on to fantasy i mean i'm just also wondering why people are just using the apps or like betting through legal sources because they can do that in like every other city they go to now so i just it doesn't really make sense to me why uh 
why bookies are necessary at this point. I mean, I understand having an old school uh, bookie and, you know, you've been probably been betting through them for a while, but why? Yeah, well, why I, well, I don't know. Like my, uh, I, I know uh, Coogs is my wife. Uh, Coogs is my brother-in-law. He uses a bookie. I don't think that, I don't think it's bad to say that. <laughs> I know he, <laughs> he uses a bookie and um, I, I, do, I can't gamble in California. If I wanted to, I would have to use a bookie, but I don't, I, you know, I, I, I think people are pretty aware from, <laughs> from, from Rasball that I'm not really a gambler. Yeah. So I don't, I'm, you know, right, sorry. Uh, oh. no, I was just going to say that, you know, my, my last big, uh, my last big bet was uh, betting Dom Smith would lead the majors in the home runs. <laughs> so I know, I know better. <laughs> Uh, yeah, after uh, after you admit that uh, and throw your, you know, uh, in law under the under the bus, I'm never telling you anything again, Greg. Yeah, uh, so uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't get uh, caught with a bookie or anything, <laughs> since that is definitely illegal still, Greg. Um, anyways, uh, let's move on to some injuries, Greg. And real quick before we really get into them, if you did have injuries during your season, don't forget that the Raz Bowl is coming up. And if you want to invite to it, you need to get signed up sooner rather than later because the first set of uh, invites are being sent out, I believe, sometime this week or next week. So if you want in the Raz Bowl, make sure you get in right now. Go over to the site and sign up and uh, make sure that you are in and registered for that if you are a fantasy football player. With that, Gray, let's give the people some fantasy baseball talk. Uh, and by that, I mean I'm going to cry and uh, moan, and uh, I may just disappear for time on end. Don't worry, I'm I'm still here somewhere. Um, but let's start in, in Dodgerland. Mookie Betts, number 16 on the season of the eight player Raider, and that might be as low as he's been all season. Um, he has a fractured bone in his left wrist. There is no timetable as of right now, but he's out for some time is the quote. Um, thanks for that brilliant insight, Davy <laughs> Robs. Uh, he's out for some time, Gray. That's uh, that's very helpful. Davey, Davey Bob. Uh, yeah, we went from we went from the uh, the problems with gambling to the problems with bets. Uh, I you know I honestly I heard about the uh, the bets injury, and I was just like, "How do I how do I learn fantasy football so I can be in the Raz Bowl? Because <laughs> now my teams are a disaster." <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's like it's imp- It's so it's so dumb to even like you know. Uh, you know, like with the timetable, it's like you're you basically you may as well just throw a dart <laughs> against the wall, like, like throw a dart against the uh, the calendar on your wall for when bets is going to return. With you know what we heard from the Dodgers, I I don't know a fractured bone in the left wrist that could mean anything from like I don't know maybe uh, three three to five weeks to September. Maybe I, you know I have no idea. Honestly, I I don't know because like you know fractured hands like uh, like what was it? T.J. Friedel he had a, a fractured thumb I think, and he came back in like I don't know what was it like three weeks, and then you have other guys uh, who like have a fractured hammock bone, and they're back in like three weeks to a month. And then you have other guys who break their wrist and they're out for three months. I, and it's like, it's impossible to know. I honestly, I don't know. Uh, it stinks though. <laughs> it definitely stinks. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I actually, um, well, we'll talk about him in a second, but I lost the other big Dodger who got injured. Uh, so with bets, you know, I guess who's replacing him. You know, I heard from the Dodgers, you know, the Dodgers uh, beat writer uh, said that it was going to go mostly to Miguel Rojas. And, you know, that's unfortunately, that's not really good for fantasy. I, it, it makes sense. Like he is he does have a good glove. So 
it kind of it makes sense for the Dodgers. I don't I don't see why the Dodgers would go to Miguel Vargas, the more interesting one for fantasy. I, I would assume they will go to Rojas. And that doesn't really help most people outside of maybe NL only, you know. Um, they also got uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Biggio recently uh, from the Jays. And, you know, he's also, I mean, it's like between Kevin, uh, Kevin Biggio, Gavin Lux, Miguel Rojas, it's like they're, they are three automatic outs at the, bother, at the bottom of the Dodgers lineup. Like the top of the lineup is still good. Like, you know, Otani moves the leadoff probably. Then you have Freeman, Will Smith, Teoscar, uh, Pages, uh, and then it's like a mixed match of Hayward, Biggio, Lux, Rojas, Enrique, uh, Kike Hernandez, Chris Taylor, who's been historically bad, by the way. I don't know, I don't know if people have been following Chris Taylor, but he's been like incredibly bad. Uh, and then Miguel Vargas was called up too. So, like, the bottom four of the Dodgers order, eh, I don't know, I don't know if there's anything really there. Outside of like maybe in a 15 team mixed league, if you want to gamble on like Biggio potentially having a little bit more value, uh, but all these guys feel kind of NL only ish. Uh, like Vargas would be the most interesting, but he's probably the one with the least amount of at bats coming his way. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not really that excited about any of the guys that are uh, taking over, you know, f- trying to fill in at least for bets. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a bit of, e- even if they kind of give it to Rojas, there's still going to be, I think, some moving in and out. And as you mentioned, none of them are really interesting for our game unless you were in very deep leagues. So uh, if you're in those leagues, you know, it is probably Vargas that, or as you mentioned, Rojas, maybe Vargas gets some, some time there biggio gets some playing time maybe it's just in uh that he slots in other places but i'm i'm not all that excited about it and yeah as you mentioned risk can be very tricky um in regards to recovery um you know if i just i just googled it and it says six to twelve weeks up to a year depending on how recovery goes so um that's not that's not what we really wanted to hear uh, let's go ahead and move over to the other injury that you mentioned for the Dodgers, which is Yoshi Yamamoto is you know, number 67 on the on the season day player editor, number 19 starting pitcher. He has a right rotor rotator cuff strain. He's going on the IL. Davy says it's not season ending. We will see about <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, talk about it like. It's just like, uh, yeah, this guy's got like, uh, you know, he's got an arm injury or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, what's the timetable? Well, he should be back this year. It's like, uh, it's June, bro. (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) He should be back this year. I hope he's back this year. (laughs) It's June. (laughs) Oh, man. It is super. I mean, it's super convenient for the Dodgers. You also got to, you got to wonder, like, how I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming it was a real injury because the velocity was down, right? Like the Dodgers have been known to fake injuries, but his velocity was down. So you you assume it was a real injury. I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is like Bobby Miller is set to return on Wednesday. So it's like, well, that's kind of convenient for for the Dodgers to suddenly have uh, Yamamoto go to the IL right when Bobby Miller's coming back? Mm, Okay. I mean, it's good for the Dodgers. It's not good for me, though. It's not good for my fantasy teams. I'll tell you that. Uh, Yeah, this stinks, man. This is it's not a it's not a good story on um, Yamamoto either, because like Bobby Miller, like he went down. you know, in April and he just disappeared for like, what was it? Like two and a half months. Like he was just, maybe it was two months, but still, I mean, he just disappeared for two months. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if Yamamoto, I mean, it's not encouraging when the manager's like, yeah, I mean, he should be back this year. It's like, yeah, I hope so. (laughs) 
I really hope so, man. <laughs> that's that is my uh, that's my hope. Uh, I don't know. So again, you know, for ETAs on return dates for Yamamoto, I don't know. Maybe maybe end of August, beginning of September, and then he like ramps up for the playoffs. And the problem the problem is with the Dodgers too. Like they don't need him, so it's like what what do they care? Like if he's back in you know, uh, right after the All-Star break in July or if he's back in September. They don't care either way. So I'm guessing he's not coming back until September just to keep his innings in check and just to ramp him up for the playoffs because that's all they really want Yamamoto for is for the playoffs. Um, Anyway, for Bobby Miller, yeah, I mean, I'm excited actually to have him back. Uh, Hopefully he looks better than he did, you know, when uh, when he went to the IL. Um, he is, I mean, he's a potential ace. I don't understand bringing him back to f- go to course as his first start. That's not great uh, from a fantasy standpoint, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm benching him this week. You know, what's the, what's the worst thing that happens? I, I miss out on a, a seven inning uh, or a six inning gem. I mean, he's not going to, th- he's not going to throw that many pitches and it's cores. So I'm benching him, but yeah, I'm I'm excited that he's coming back. Hopefully, you know, not this week, next week he can go into my fantasy, you know, he can go into my fantasy team lineup and, you know, do well like we thought he was going to in March. Yeah. So let me give you some names here with Bobby Miller uh returning. Who would you rather have? Bobby Miller or Andrew Heaney? Oh God, Miller! Yeah, <laughs> Andrew Heaney! Oh my God, no! Who who would I rather have? Nate Pearson for maybe the occasional save once every three weeks, or Andrew Heaney? <laughs> I want I want Pearson. No, I I don't want Andrew Heaney in any. Way. Okay. God, no. <laughs> All right. How about uh, how about you know surprise of the season? Maybe Ben Lively. Uh, that's, that's a little bit closer, but I would go Bobby Miller just on the hope that he's back and, you know, it looks as anywhere close to what we were, thought we were getting. Uh, I, I like, I do like Ben Lively though. Uh, you know, I've, I've had him for about a month and a half now in uh, a couple leagues and other than, other than his Sunday start, he's, he's looked pretty good for a while now, but yeah, I would, I would still go Bobby Miller just for the uh, chance for upside. All right, one last one. Would you go him or our fellow Dodger, Gavin Stone? Uh, I'm going Gavin Stone. Yeah, I mean his ERA has been great. The strikeouts aren't aren't uh, you know spectacular, but I would I would agree. Just the the way he's been pitching has been strong enough that I, I think I'd just take the bird in the hand there and uh, just move forward with with Stone. All right, let's move on to Arizona where Corbin Carroll left the game on Sunday. He's going for an MRI on his left side. This feels like uh, regardless of how this MRI comes, he's going to miss some time because he feels like he needs to miss some time. You know, he was drafted obviously as a consensus top five player, currently 230th on the player rater. (laughs) If he misses time. That's high. Honestly, I thought he was worse. Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. it does seem it does seem like it should be worse. But you know, he, he hits at the top of the lineup. He hits every day, um, and he still has some stolen bases. So yeah, I mean, I guess I guess a little bit of value there. Are you looking at anybody that's replaced him? Which looks like right now, it looks like Rendell Grichik and Jock Peterson, likely the two beneficiaries. Haven't seen an IL move yet because they're waiting, I guess, to see how the MRI goes. But again, I I'm assuming he's going at least for some. If not just a minimal stay, maybe even longer, just kind of give himself right. Yeah, you would think. Uh, supposedly, he's uh, the results just came back and it says uh, his MRI was clean, um, unlike his stat line, <laughs> which is which is really ugly and dirty. I uh, I you know I think um, Corbin Carroll for me is like I mean I wouldn't drop him. But I, I would like look at him as like a third or fourth outfielder at this point. I mean, you, you can't like if something comes of him, great. But I'm not like 
I'm not expecting a bounce back. Uh, you know, like the MRI is clean on his left side, but what's it look like on his shoulder? <laughs> Are his knees okay? Because uh, he's not really even stealing bases like he should. Is his like his left side is clean, but what's the MRI like on his right side? <laughs> so there's a problem somewhere with Corbin Carroll that we have not gotten to the bottom of. Uh, like he's he's not right at all. Like that's I think that's you know at this point. I mean I'm not saying anything shocking here. Everyone realizes Corbin Carroll is is off this year. Uh, so. You know, in shallower leagues, I would I would look at like you know if he were on waivers, I would pick him up in a ten in a ten team mixed league. I would pick up Corbin Carroll, but I wouldn't expect anything other than steals. And if I were in a twelve team mixed league, I would hold on to him. But like I said, I would think of him as like a third or fourth outfielder. And you know, like Duran or Corbin Carroll. I think Duran's been much better. I don't, I don't see any reason why to think Carroll would be better. Um, you know, earlier this year, we were talking about 2025 and where, where Corbin Carroll was going to end up, you know, getting drafted for next year. I, I think I said originally like top 25, but I don't think he's going to be top 75 at this point. I don't know. Maybe, May, you know, like maybe, maybe like 75 overall. He's definitely going to be like, you know, someone taking a flyer on a bounce back because and it doesn't look like he's coming out of this. You know, hopefully I eat my words and he does come out of it, but it doesn't look like it's happening. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's going to be based on just the upside that we've seen from him and just assuming that this is an injury riddled season, he's just not right. I, I assume we'll get some kind of information at some point that – that says such. Um, I mean, if we're just looking for, you know, that eventuality, we can, we can talk about some names real quick, Gray. I mean, obviously if you're talking about that, I, I'll just throw out, you know, obviously you're taking Julio Rodriguez over him. Um, would you take Tatis over him? Oh God. Yeah. You, okay. you, you wouldn't. No, I, I, I would. I'm just asking. Yeah, about throwing, no, no, that's fair. Yeah, not not to. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to snap at you. Uh, <laughs> what would you? The guy who I said is closer. I. What about Duran? Duran or Corbin Carroll? Who are you taking? I mean, I think if we're talking for next year, which you know, then we're talking full upside. I, I think I'd probably still go Carroll. Uh, Duran just has zero power, so you just you right. know you're missing. What about right? What about right now? That's but right now for rest of season, yeah. I mean, I would go Duran because I I don't think Carroll's healthy uh, right. rest of season. Yeah. Okay. And what about, uh, what about it's kind of apples and oranges, but what about someone who else? Someone who also hasn't been healthy, Tyler O'Neill or Corbin Carroll for this year alone. Uh, I'll take Corbin Carroll there. Yeah. I, I would I would too, but it's close though, right? I just don't trust Tyler O'Neill in think. general, and then I don't trust him to stay healthy yeah. on top of it. So it's like a a double. I don't trust you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I I hear you. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think uh, I think they're probably uh, Tyler Tyler O'Neill. Um, what about uh, Jerickson Pro this year? Jerickson Profar or Corbin Carroll? That's that's really mean to make me have to say this out loud, Gray. I I think you have to go pro far just based on what he's been doing. I mean, we could definitely see like one of the hardest first half to second half flips to where he's you know a top twenty five player and he goes to you know bottom of the two fifty range somewhere. But as of right now, I mean, how can you not say it, it's pro far? This is uh this is probably an easy one, but Tay Oscar or Corbin Carroll? Uh Tay Oscar. I mean Tay Oscar's been putting up good numbers. The uh, stolen bases slowed down after that first little burst, but it looks like everything else is. So, okay, is so you're re life. you're yeah. re-ranking this point forward. You're drafting tomorrow. Corbin Carroll is getting drafted for you. When are you taking him overall? Uh I would say he's probably going in the top 80, 
90, yeah. somewhere in that range. Yeah, that sounds like it makes sense. Yeah, like I said, like 75 overall. Yeah, because yeah, there's some really boring guys that are going to go that I'm just not interested in in that area, and I'll just I'll take the upside and, and grab the boring later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. Go go for the boing before the boring. Yeah, and uh, and if we're redrafting now, you know, I feel like we, you know, if you redraft yeah. midseason, you have a better idea of pitchers too than we do preseason a little bit. Like someone it feels else, like someone it gets else who is uh, someone else who is uh, someone else who is also struggling, Adalos Garcia or Corbin Carroll. Hmm. I mean, I think that's a needs-based one if you need power or steals because I think they're kind of giving you only one thing, really. Um, they might give you some county numbers, but they're primarily going to be power or speed. I guess I would have – I guess I'd go a Dallas just because I, I think he's going to get back together. I don't think it's necessarily an injury-related thing, whereas if they're not going to sit Corbin down, which based on the report, it doesn't sound like they're sitting him down for – any kind of real time. Um, I don't know when he's supposed to get healthy. Like, I don't know when that happens until we get in the next season. Yeah. I think also with uh, Adalas, I think the, the concern that everyone had for the last three years that he never took any pitches is finally caught up to him this year. Uh, but in fairness to Adalas Garcia, he is around 85 overall on the player Raider versus Corbin Carroll, who you mentioned earlier was at like 230 or whatever. Yeah, so, I mean... So Adolis Garcia, Adolis Garcia has been worse than we've seen from him, but still not that bad. Yeah, I mean, part of it's that he got out of the gate really hot, and then it's just been kind of dreadful for like a month and a half. So I know if you if you own a Dallas, you're, you're just waiting for it to kind of snap out, but I really do believe it's coming. It's just a little bit of uh, you know, his he's just kind of not making the greatest of contact and getting a little unlucky on top of that. Nothing else in the numbers really says, like, you know, he's done and it's not coming back at any point. So uh, I think, if anything, this is probably the time to buy a Dallas rather than, um, you know, try and sell him off low. Okay. While we're on Arizona real quick, I just want to mention that Jordan Lawler is a hamstring injury, which is – course just happening after he's back for like a couple of weeks following the offseason thumb surgery so uh sucks for Jordan Lawler but if you've been holding on to him because you thought he might get called up because he was just smashing the ball um you know you may have to wait it out so if you need that roster spot you could probably let him go because it it sounds like he's going to be out for at least a couple weeks here yeah yeah agreed all right, great. Moving on to Atlanta, Michael Harris has a grade two left hamstring strain. No time timetable for return. It's usually a four to eight week type of thing, depending on where it fits in that grade two and recovery process. There's a bunch of junk here to replace him, um, Gray. Are you interested in anything there? Or maybe we see Atlanta trade for somebody or – Maybe they just become sellers because they don't think it's Atlanta's year. <laughs> uh, I think they're probably still going to win. Uh, they should probably still get the wild card. But, that I mean, everyone gets the wild card, you know. Uh, yeah, anyway, 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 yeah. anyway but that beyond, that's beyond uh, at the point at this point. Um, so I would say, yeah, I mean, the Braves options are hopefully worse than your options in your fantasy <laughs> Hopefully you have better options. So, I mean, they, they're going to like Loriano, maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't even know who they're going to, but I I hope you have better options. So, yeah, I would I would yeah. try. And, uh, outside of like NL only, I don't think any of those names really matter. Uh, uh, you know, like the Forest Wall, Brian Anderson's of the world, eh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Loriano – if he can magically recapture the 2019 bounty ball version of himself, there might be a little bit, but I mean, again, that was, it was so long ago. And with that ball forest wall could maybe get you some stolen bases, but it's real boring. 
in regards to their replacement options currently. So going, yeah, they're going to they're going to push. I wouldn't Oriano, be surprised. If they make trade. Oriano, you're going from one Peds suspended player to. <laughs> Yep, let's go ahead and move on to Cincinnati, where Nova Marte is due back by the end of June, Greg. June 28th, I believe, is the date currently. Uh, last year, three home runs, six stolen bases, and 35 games with the Reds, 316, 366, 456. Obviously, the uh, suspension draws some of that into question, potentially. What are you thinking? Where do you think he slots in for the Reds? Is he full-time? Uh, is this somebody that you're willing to stash for, you know, two weeks, or are you just waiting, waiting until he gets called back or gets uh, back out? Uh, you know, I actually a bug, uh, crawl, uh, a bug <laughs> crawled, a bug crawled up my butt uh, this morning, and I got a, uh, I got a hankering for some novel, no, no leve, no leve. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I got a uh, Noel, Noel, Noel Bay Marte. Uh, I, I picked him up. Uh, long story short, I picked him up in uh, our 12 team uh, mixed league. And if I need a spot in that league, I might drop him before he comes back. But I picked him up for now. So we'll see. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if, uh, like, wh- where's Marte? So I, I'm assuming Condelaria stays at third. He's been fine, right? Uh, and uh, so I'm assuming, like, uh, second base. Well, DH is open for the Reds. So you have uh, Nick Martini. <laughs> uh, Nick Martini and um, a bunch of other, like, guys that you don't care about has have been – DHing so far for the Reds. So I would assume Jonathan India goes to DH for the most part, or at least like platoons in and out. And uh, Marte then uh, he takes over for India uh, at second, I would guess, if that's, or maybe uh, Condelaria goes into the D- DH uh, and Marte takes over a third. I, I don't know. I I think Marte plays though. I mean, I would assume so. I I'd be kind of surprised if he doesn't play. I, my my guess is he he mostly plays second um, with the India switching out. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I like Marte. Like I said, I picked him up in the uh, in our twelve team mix league. So he's got power and speed. He was, I believe, before the ped suspension, he was going around like 75 to 85 overall on uh, in preseason drafts. So he was it wasn't or maybe a hundred, a hundred and ten, maybe somewhere in there. I, I forget. Um, but he was, you know, I mean, people wanted uh Marte on their team. So it's like I, I don't think any of that really has uh you know, completely evaporated just because he got suspended. I don't know. I, I don't, you know, for the most part with these suspensions, um, Loriano included, uh, I don't know. Loriano's actually, I, I don't know what the Loriano situation was, but with Marte and sort of like, and, and Tatis, like with those, you know, they're saying that they didn't know that they were taking pets, which, you know, honestly, I mean, I, I, I laugh there. Uh, I had a, uh, an inadvertent giggle, but like, honestly, I, it doesn't, it wouldn't shock me if they really didn't know that they were taking pets because, you know, if you're rehabbing and a doctor prescribes something, or if you're just like, if you're down, if you're taking something, you're not sure what it is. Yeah, I mean that could happen. So if someone doesn't, you know, like in Marte, it wasn't like Marte was taking peds. Like people hear peds, and I think they think like McGuire or Bonds. And it's not like it's not like Marte went from like a 12 homer hitter to like a 60 homer hitter. I mean, he was, he was always a 15 homer hitter, right? It's not like he like suddenly became Brady Anderson or something. Like he didn't, he didn't suddenly get 50 homer power. So it's like, okay, he was taking peds. Even if he was, 
it wasn't like he was taking steroids, you know? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sort of of the mind of like, you know, if a guy was taking PEDS, what was – maybe he was taking it to like, you know, have his uh, hamstring not bother him anymore. Who knows? I don't know. But he wasn't – he was obviously – this isn't like the days of like – Jose Canseco sticking a needle in Mark McGuire's ass to ha- help him hit 70 homers. <laughs> like, this is, it, we're way past that point. Um, you know, I think with Marte, my guess is he's going to be totally uh, fine for, uh, you know, when he returns, when he gets up to speed. But right now in the minors, he, he has not looked great, but it's super early. It's a, uh, you know, he's only played uh, five games as of right now, and he's been striking out a lot. He hasn't walked once yet. So he's, it's obviously, it's like spring training for him. So it, it's going to take him a little bit of time to get up to speed. But yeah, I mean, I would grab him in any league if, if he's back with the Reds because, you know, the Reds playing a good part for hitting. Um, and Marte does have power and speed and he's always shown a a solid ability to make contact, uh, in previous years. So yeah, I like him. Yeah. And there's no reason he can slot in as high as six or seven. I mean, Martini, India, Benson aren't necessarily keeping him from, from moving up that lineup. Tyler Stevenson has been performing well recently, but before that he was absolutely abysmal. So he could definitely move above uh, Tyler Stevenson and, and even Jake Fraley. So, I mean, he could be up to five, I, I think, uh, if if he starts to click in the minors a little bit. But, yeah, as you mentioned, like he's jumping in. There's no, there's no ramp up to spring training games for him. It's like he's jumping in the middle of a minor league season and he's trying to get get going. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the numbers look bad. You know, initially, it'll just be if he can kind of turn it around before he joins the Reds. Definitely not a bad gamble because there's probably not anything quite like him on your waiver wire except in in short or in uh, shallow leagues. Let's move over to Yankees. Rizzo, Anthony Rizzo has a right hand slash wrist injury. We're waiting to hear about seriousness. Um, LeMahieu, Oswaldo Cabrera likely going to handle the corner spots. Uh, Maybe Ben Rice gets a look gray, but what are you thinking in regards to kind of the uh, replacement options here for Rizzo if he he has to miss some time? Uh, Yeah, you know, someone someone in uh, the comments asked about Ben Rice. Uh, You know, he's got a He's, he's hitting well in the minors, has a, a lot of power. Seems kind of like – seems like he might be a quad A player, uh, Ben Rice. I don't know. He's But it's hard to say with the Yankees because they just leave every – you know, they don't promote rookies unless, you know, it's like Volpe or, you know, a, a really like a, a top rookie. If it's not a top rookie, they're not giving them the time of day. Like Dominguez, Volpe, those are the kind of guys that uh, the Yankees promote. Anyway, Ben Rice is 25 years old, and he just made it to AAA. So I don't think he's really anything. I, I, I honestly, maybe if he's anything, he's just power. But I don't really see the Yankees going to him. If anything, I see the Yankees going, like you mentioned, I see them going to like LeMahieu, um, you know, at first, and then probably uh, a combination of like Cabrera uh, at third, maybe Cabrera, uh, maybe uh, Grisham, you know, maybe uh, Grisham plays uh, a little bit of uh, second and Glaber goes to uh, third, maybe, I mean, excuse me, first. Uh, I don't know. They, they have they have some flexibility with uh, DJ LeMahieu. So I would assume that they whatever they have on their major league roster right now is what it's going to be. And no one that interesting is going to come into play with like, you know, the Ben Rice of the world, um, you know, or any or anyone else really that's of interest uh, with you know, the Yankees, if Rizzo needs to be, uh, you know, needs to be IL'd for, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I, as of the recording of this, it's hard to say. I, I, we don't know exactly what Rizzo's injury is. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would guess that's good. You should mention they're just going to move some people around and it's not gonna really going to affect the people that we're seeing in the lineup regularly. Maybe, you know, like you said, Ben Rice or somebody gets promoted and, and sees a day here or there. But I would imagine LeMahieu goes the first, uh, Oswaldo covers third, or Glaber goes the third, and, and Oswaldo covers second, some combination of that. Uh, and they just they just go on as as they've been doing. Uh, Jason Dominguez, while we're on the Yankees, goes back to the IL with a left oblique after a check swing. So just another kind of if you were waiting on him and thinking he was coming up this week because he's been hot pretty much since he got back from the IL, uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit longer. And uh, Garrett Cole should only have one more rehab outing before he returns. Cody Poteet is probably back to the bullpen or minors, although he's done – you know, fairly admirable in his his four starts, Gray. Yeah, yeah, I picked him up in uh, one deeper league for uh, a spot start or two. But yeah, I think he's he's probably going back to uh, long relief or the pen or something. Yeah, I, I I assume he's not getting sent down just because he's been performing. We uh, should have uh, Garrett Garrett Cole's return uh, is actually uh, another instance where uh people who have moved on to uh fantasy football already uh when they when they drafted garrett cole and uh right before his injury in uh, february march they they immediately went to fantasy football so those people we should put out an app to get them back to uh the baseball garrett cole's coming back guys i don't he's probably he's probably coming back for how long was kyle bradish back for with the orioles that's <laughs> That's kind of what – with Garrett Cole, I'm kind of expecting, like, you know, him to look really good for, like, a month and then be like, oh, we uh, – yeah, he just uh, he just threw a, a quality start 10K uh, game, and then the next day you you hear about how he's having, uh, you know, arm issues. I, I – honestly, I'm, I'm not anticipating Garrett Cole to be back – and go from like you know Wednesday through the end of the season without any sort of setbacks. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm cynical, but I I'd be kind of surprised to see Garrett Cole return and be totally fine the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just be the optimistic one and say I think if he wasn't healthy, they wouldn't be bringing him back. I mean, they there's so much money invested in him and and. Not just money, but you know their their ace, their their hopes in the playoffs. Everything is is tied to them. So I think if there was something still wrong, they wouldn't bring him back. But you know, whenever there's an injury, re-injury is always a, a little bit easier than that first one. So we will wait and see on Cole. Um, I mean, I think immediately, Gray, where where would you have him among starting pitchers? even with the fact that you, you don't think he's necessarily going to finish the season um, or, or at least not, you know, mis- without missing a little bit here or there, like would he be a top 25 pitcher for you still? Well, that's always, that's always a tough call when it comes to like ranking uh, players for the rest of the year, because it's like Garrett Cole, if he's healthy, he's a top, 20 starter in my eyes but the but that with that comes the caveat that he probably is not going to make it the rest of the year healthy so do you take uh garrett cole being healthy right now or do you want you know uh, i don't know say uh freddie peralta who's just been horrendous but has at least has no signs that he's you know injured <laughs> At least yet, <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know. Or okay, we'll say Louis Hill. Uh, just keep it with the Yankees. Do you take him or Garrett Cole? I mean, with the the caveat that uh, Hill Heel is going to be probably throttled down and not be able to throw, you know, that many more innings. I, I don't know. I, it's it's hard to say. I guess I'm just like hedging <laughs> because I don't know how long Gary Cole is going to pitch for. I I would guess under 75 innings. 
Uh, so I don't know where are we at. We're in middle of June. So under 75 innings isn't really that many. Uh, it's not that bad actually. Um, that's but, missing like six, but, five, six starts maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Say, uh, Garrett Cole, I guess Garrett Cole to me is a top, let's say top 30 starter right now. Um, you know, hopefully he stays healthy. I, I don't see, but the thing is with him, like, I don't see why he wouldn't be a top 10 or 15 starter if he actually is healthy. Right. I mean, it's just that there's no hope that he stays healthy. I don't know. It's, it's a hard question. I don't know. Like, I guess top 30 ish for the rest of the season, you know, thinking like with, with the, uh, you know, with the actual, uh, you know, hedge slash caveat that he may not stay healthy. So say top 30 with the, uh, you know, the, the problem of his, uh, you know, potentially uh, being injured again before the end of the year. Yeah, I think for me, I'm a little bit more optimistic just in regards to where he'll be. Even if he does only throw 75 innings, I feel like they're going to be as good as anybody else um, in regards to you know performance per inning, or at least they should be. Just looking through it, I think I'd have a hard time not getting him in my top 20 and maybe even top 15. So uh, maybe I'm just a little bit more optimistic on him, but... We'll wait and see on that one. It's not like you can go out and pick him up. So um, strictly trade, I guess, if we're, we're talking here, if you're looking for it. And it's really one where you're like, you kind of need to swing for the fences, I think. Like your pitching's kind of uh, holding you back and you can't afford to move, you know, a huge bat for a, an ace. But you can take the gamble on, on like a call. Let's move on to Milwaukee. William Trares has going through concussion evaluation. Uh, if he misses, I assume Gary Sanchez is likely to fill in for him for the most part uh, while he's out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Tampa Bay, Shane Baz is expected back soon. Um, I mean, let's let's throw him in this discussion of injured pitchers. I assume you'd rather have Cole than Baz since Baz can't ever stay healthy, but uh, where does where does Baz fall amongst pitchers? I mean, is he top seventy given the injury risk? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I like after top, say after top Four, 60, fifty. Yeah, after top fifty, it's kind of like then you're in like you know matchups really. Like Baz to me is like I mean he's he is a really good starter if he's actually healthy and with the Rays, right? I mean, he is as good as, you know, maybe a top 30 starter if he's actually, if he's in, if he's in the majors and starting, the problem is like, he can't stay healthy <laughs> and you don't know how many innings you're going to get. You know, I think I said to someone on the site that uh, he looks like about, you know, uh, 50 innings this year for, uh, for the rest of the season. So, I mean, that might be optimistic, uh, all things considered. But 50 innings, three and a half, a three, maybe a 3.3 .3 ERA. Um, he usually has pretty good command. You know, his command has been a little wonky in the minors this year, but that's simply, you know, coming back from Tommy John surgery. You know, guys don't have command uh, when they first come back from it. So, that's expected. Uh, yeah, I like, I mean, I like him to pick him up off of waivers. Like, I think, you know, the difference with Garrett Cole, I think he was probably already rostered in every league and he was being stashed on the IL where Boz, I, I think, you know, people have commented on Rasball talking about picking him up. So he's available in some places. I would, I would grab him. I would stash him. I like him. I just think he's, you know, unlikely to throw that many innings. Plus, you have the Rays who either do an opener or they, you know, they pull guys after four innings. So, you know, I don't know. I, I like him, though. I would grab him in any league just for the potential upside. I don't really see uh, 
I, I, Garrett Cole over him for sure. Uh, oh, going, yeah. going back to your original question, Garrett Cole absolutely over Baz, but yeah, maybe top 50 to, you know, top 50 to 60 overall uh, starter for Baz. Okay. I mean, that sounds, that sounds right as long as he's healthy. And then, you know, you kind of adjust, adjust from there, depending on how it, how it goes. Um, yeah. I mean, he's, he's always been good when he's been healthy. Just the max innings he's ever thrown is 81. How can you expect him to really throw a ton? And especially coming back from major surgery, the first season back usually isn't quite as polished as, uh, as they are pre-surgery. So I'll probably be on in on him in 2025. You really, I mean, really, yeah. Assuming he gets there with a healthy arm and a healthy shoulder and everything. He really has like, I mean, this has been, I don't know what the Rays are doing really with, in regards to him, because I mean, I guess they're waiting until he looks right. uh, I'm assuming, you know, uh, but like he's been gone for a while. He hasn't like he he had Tommy John surgery in September of 2022. Where you know this is like what is it 20 20 months later three so yeah like almost you know it's been a while <laughs> 18 18 19 months later it's been a long time so I think he's probably ready um as of right now <laughs> i don't know i guess uh, it depends on too like where he goes in the uh like uh, it wouldn't shock me to see the ray the rays have you know say you know he's coming up and gonna be a long man out of the pen and then throws like three to four innings you know, uh, once or twice a week, which, you know, kind of hurts his fantasy value too. So we'll see. It depends on with uh, Zach Lydell as well, because if he's, you know, he has, he was awful on Friday uh, in his start. So I don't know how long he's going to be in the rotation, but I'm assuming he stays in the rotation. And if he does, then the Rays have they have five guys in the rotation ready. So where does Boz go? That's why I'm saying maybe he becomes a three to four inning guy out of the bullpen. Uh, like he'll follow, you know, maybe he follows like uh, Sean Armstrong. You know, Sean Armstrong is an opener and then he follows him maybe for three to four innings. I don't know. That could be too. Yeah. Or you just kick Aaron Zavale's bum ass to the curb and, um, Throw him in the pen. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at their peaks, Baz is better than everybody in the rotation except for Eflin, maybe. So, yeah. Ty, I mean, if, Ty, if he's if he's healthy and he's back and they're ready to put him in the rotation, like mm-hmm. I don't see why he wouldn't, you know, be put into the rotation. It, I, it feels really weird to have him build up to six innings, and that seems like why he was down in the minors for so long was to get him built up to – the point he could throw enough pitches. Um, it feels weird to get him to that point and then throw him in the in a long reliever weird role. I they could yeah. definitely go six pitchers. I mean, with starters, we've seen them do that time right. and time again. So um I, I do wonder if it ultimately his career ends up in the pen just based off the injuries, but seems for now he's I would guess for now he's still gonna start. Um, but we'll we'll wait and see. Mm-hmm. Grab him while you can, though, and, and see what happens. I, I mean, I think the upside is worth it. Mm-hmm. Let's move over to Baltimore. You already mentioned Kyle Bradish, who is going back to the IL with right elbow discomfort after dealing with a UCL sprain earlier this year. Looks like Cade Povich is likely to keep his spot in the rotation. Nick Vespi was recalled in the IL move for Bradish, but I think that's really more of a long pin type of move than – um, a rotation. I think Povich is just taking the spot there. Uh, anything on, on Cade Povich or, I mean, Bradish, I don't know what, when we're in. Yeah. I, you know, I think with Povich, uh, I, well, AL only, obviously, uh, yeah. for anyone, uh, anyone who's in a rotation, but I don't see him really being anything outside of possibly a streamer in a mixed league if he gets a good matchup. Otherwise, I wouldn't go near Povish. Uh, I think the Bradish injury is probably the biggest, you know, the the 
the thing that Bradish's injury tells me is like sell Santander for an arm <laughs> like yesterday. Set send Santander to a, a another team for any arm you can get. Like I don't know. I don't know what that means. If that means uh you know a Marlin pitcher or I don't know who that is, but send Santander somewhere for an arm and then, you know, play Kobe Mayo or something. I don't know. But Povich is not the answer uh, in fantasy or in reality. I don't, I don't think at least um, I think in, uh, in reality, he's got a better shot than in fantasy. I, I wouldn't go near him in fantasy. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, he's, he just hasn't shown any kind of consistency. Uh, he had a good start his last time out where he went against Atlanta and didn't walk anybody, had six strikeouts, no earned. But the previous start, he gave, had four walks with two strikeouts and gave up six earned and, and five and a third at Toronto. So uh, just really hard to trust him for any kind of consistency outside of deeper leagues where you just have to start anybody that's getting kind of innings. While we're on Baltimore, I'll just mention that Jackson Holiday is having a right elbow inflammation and looks like he's heading to the IL. And AAA, not supposed to be serious, but again, just updating the minor league top prospect status as we're moving through here. Um, Philadelphia, Trey Turner is returning. Edmund Sousa has been filling in. He's actually been doing all right, but it looks like he's probably heading to the bench or maybe he gets to platoon in the outfield or some kind of utility infield role because he has been actually doing all right given that we're about to be here at the second half season second half mark at least in regards to the actual split of the season not necessarily all-star break but where would you fit Trey in rest of season gray um assuming he's healthy i would probably say top 20 overall okay so i mean you're you're pretty optimistic on him then not not too worried about the uh the return of the injury or you know obviously what we saw at the beginning of uh last season no i, I mean he was you know yeah i mean the beginning of last season wasn't good but i mean this season prior to the injury he was hitting 343 uh with 10 steals in and that was in 33 games so uh, yeah i mean i don't I don't know. I mean, obviously that was with a high Babbitt. He's not a 343 hitter. He's probably closer to a, a 290 hitter, but still, you know, 290 the rest of the way, 290, 20 steals, seven to 12 homers, maybe 10 homers. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine. That's top for at the top of a good lineup, uh, hitting second in a good lineup. Um, yeah. I mean, he's probably, for me, he's like top 20-ish. All right. Um, would you rather have him or uh, Bryson Stott? Oh, Trey Turner, absolutely. It's not close. Okay. All right. Uh, him or Jazz? Uh, I would go Trey Turner over Jazz. All right. How about uh, Trey or Tay Oscar? I know that's kind of Trey. power versus speed. but Yeah, apples, oranges, but still I would go Trey Turner. Okay, so pretty much taking him back where he was uh, preseason then. Yeah, more or less. A little bit, maybe 10 spots down from where I had him in the preseason, but you know, close. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's just a little bit of risk coming back from an injury, but, I mean, as you mentioned, the numbers were, were great pre-injury. Um, you know, if you're expecting the power of a few years to come back, I don't necessarily think we're coming that, but he'll give you the average, he'll give you speed, and then the counting numbers that comes with that. Let's move over to Houston. Uh, the long, long overdue Joey or Jose Abreu experiment in Houston <laughs> is over. Gray, we can finally be done with that. Um, not necessarily a replacement for Abreu, but Joey Loperfito is coming back as well. Um, where are you at on, on Loperfito? Where he's coming back, I believe, Thursday this week. What are you thinking in regards to picking him up? What is this a pickup across every league or what are you thinking? Uh, yeah. So uh, Dana Brown, the Astros GM said uh, Loprofito was coming back on uh, 
you know, the 21st or whatever, when he uh, when he's able to come back after getting sent down. Uh, and uh, I would grab him in just about any league. I mean, outside maybe, you know, a 10-team mixed league, you have other options. But, I, like, Loper Vito, I grabbed him in a 12-team mixed league. Uh, I, would, I would grab him in just about any 12-team mixed league or deeper. Uh, so I... I actually grabbed him last week in a 15 team mixed league and I, I held on to him. So yeah, I, I like him. I, you know, he's, he's killing it. And in, in the minor leagues, uh, he's, you know, 13 homers, nine steals hitting two, uh, hitting 276 with a, uh, you know, a little bit high on the, the strikeouts. And when he was up in the majors, he was a little bit high on the strikeouts. So that's a little bit of a concern. But, you know, he's got power and speed. I would, I mean, unless you're, like, really stacked at your hitting in your lineups, <laughs> in your fantasy team lineups, I think he's probably got uh, room in just about any team just to see, like, you know, how he gets, how he's played. I think, you know, the issue with John Singleton at first base, he ha- for the Astros, I mean, he has he has been hitting well, enough where the Astros may want to continue uh, using him. Uh, Tucker right now, Tucker's out uh, still as of right now, but he's probably due back, you know, by, he might come back by the same time as Luper Fido. So, you know, Tucker comes back, that clogs up the outfield a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think Luper Fido could find at bats Either, you know, either where Dubon is playing or Singleton is playing. And then, um, yeah, I mean, any at bats is, is for if you're in a daily league, especially like if you can uh, put him in and out of your lineup. But in uh, a weekly league, it might become a little bit more difficult because Lil Perfido is, uh, you know, he, he might platoon a bit. But I like him. I, I would grab him. Yeah, I would, I would imagine uh, even once Tucker's back. He's going to be on the strong side of platoon at worst, you would think, because Dubon, Jake Byers, like they don't need to necessarily uh, start every day. Trey Cabbage, um, who's, <laughs> who's just – Trey Cabbage is filling in for Tucker. He's going to get sent back down. But, um, <laughs> you know, maybe somebody can slide over and fill in for John Singleton if he struggles. But I don't think Loper Fido's ever played first base, so I think that's going to require some – so movement from the uh, the rest of the team to make that happen. So you were, we'll see what happens. With if you were that, named, uh, if you were named Trey Cabbage, would you change your name? <laughs> like, <laughs> I would feel like, it's, it, like as soon as I turn eighteen, I'd be like, you know what, I'm not gonna be Trey Cabbage no more. <laughs> I'm sick of people saying your name is Trey Cabbage. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I'm changing it as soon as I turn eighteen. Goodbye. Goodbye, Cabbage. <laughs> Changing my name to Kimchi. Kimchi. What? <laughs> Changing my name to Trey Kimchi. <laughs> I'm fermenting my name. Uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> All right, Greg. Uh, Pittsburgh, Henry Davis is going to 7 day IL for concussion. Um, Yasmin Gondal and Jason DeLay going to fill in there. I don't think there's really anything to comment on for that. Just a little bit of news. Um, Texas, Texas, Max Scherzer, Josh Jung, Josh Spores all on their way back. Scherzer comes back. Who's losing their starting spot in Texas, Gray? Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess Dunning probably. Uh, I mean, even though I hate Andrew Heaney, <laughs> I think I think the Rangers will probably keep playing him. But, uh, yeah, probably Dunning or maybe uh, uh, Lorenz. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he goes to the. Uh, he becomes a long man. Maybe I don't know. It's uh, it's not great <laughs> either. Whoever is there, uh, unless you're in an AL only or a streamer. I mean, Lorenz is. He's been decent, I guess, for streaming yeah. options. Um, but yeah, I guess Dunning loses the job. Um, I, I would assume, but that's. I mean, Scherzer. I mean, you know, I like. You know, I like Scherzer <laughs> as a player. He's fun to watch, but I, you're like, I mean, if you're expecting much out of Scherzer, 
I would actually, if I was the Rangers, I'd probably trade them because uh, it looks like the Rangers are are not going to repeat, right? So I would probably be trading Scherzer to a uh, a playoff team, if anything. But uh, anyway, I I don't know what's going to happen there. But um, yeah, I w- I don't have much hope for Scherzer, um, and I have less hope for Dane Dane Dunning. So I guess him. <laughs> that's uh that's fair uh would you rather have um let's see i'm trying to think of anybody that would go go okay versus scherzer here that really would would take up the grom to the grom or scherzer uh i guess scherzer there uh i mean my... you're gonna go baz over over scherzer right yeah yeah i take baz over scherzer i Honestly, what's what's Scherzer's over under for uh, innings this year? Thirty five, maybe. Are you uh, taking, are you taking the Are you taking the over there? I think I would take the over if you're going to give me thirty five. <laughs> um, just because okay. it's Scherzer, like I feel like if he can pitch, he's yeah. gonna pitch. Yeah, maybe um, I'm maybe I'm being too harsh. I don't know. Maybe maybe Scherzer. Can I mean, he put up 150 innings last year. It's not like he's yeah, like been throwing fair. 60 innings for the last six years. He's yeah, not Shane yeah. Bass. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll say you know you've convinced me. Yeah, I'll say Scherzer probably over under is <laughs> probably closer to 60. 60 innings is probably over under. Yeah. I think I think that's probably about right, and also some some load management from from Texas is if they can win some games and stay in the hunt, um, just because mm-hmm. you know that's he was brought in for a specific purpose, and uh, regular season was wasn't necessarily what that it was, right? And he has, uh, I mean, he has, yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, he has pitched well even as he's gotten older uh, on, you know, is, is assuming he's healthy, he has been okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Josh Jung, when he comes back, I assume Josh Smith is probably going to lose some playing time or maybe he, he moves to DH uh, to Barris Duran could fl- split some time in center field potentially. Um, but Josh Jung in particular, where would you have him, kind of rest of season at the corner there at third base, would it be a top 12 third baseman? Mm, I don't, I don't know about that. Um, I mean, third base is kind of ugly. It's yeah, that's been a very underperforming position this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the last like five years. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's fair. It is not a great position. Um, Josh, Josh Smith is currently 17th, actually. So yeah. that gives you a frame of reference. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe top 15. Josh Jung or Heimer Condelaria, who is the 15th uh third baseman. Mm, I guess I guess I would go, I guess I'd go Josh Jung there, but barely. Yeah, I I'd, I'd agree. I'd go Jung, but I think it's more like us hoping yeah. that he does something because, like, what's the like the upside is basically Heimer Candelaria Candelaria. with a little bit more power, <laughs> like maybe he'll hit a little bit more power from Jung, but like, yeah, he's basically Candelario, like, that's what we're we would expect from him, rest of season coming off of an injury, like, that's that's kind of what it looks like, right? Yeah, god, I forgot how what a hot start he was having uh, before he got injured. I mean, it was only four games, yeah. but he, he hit two homers, stole a base, and was hitting 412. <laughs> Man, that would have been uh, that would have been nice <laughs> if that was the breakout. Um, yeah, I don't know. Josh Jung, unfortunately, he's like he can barely he can he never stays healthy. Man, uh, yeah, I I don't know. I I like Josh Jung though. I guess you know it's uh, a wing and a prayer, but I would take. Jung probably over Heimer Candelaria. I think the maybe the argument against Candelaria would be as the Reds lineup is is becoming healthy, does he maybe lose some at bats, which kind of makes the injury risk with Jung even, at least in my mind. That's the argument. But I think I'd go Candelario again, just injury risk 
and I mean, you get him, you get him right now. He can still play. He's been hitting like third or fourth most days uh, for the Reds, so it just feels uh, like a safer bet. But I could definitely see Jung just coming back and being hot like he was uh, to start the season. Mm. Yeah. All right, Gray. Let's talk about a couple of. Uh, I guess call up kind of is maybe the wrong word, but like you know, they're they're getting their shot. DJ Hers, um, he had a start on uh, Saturday, I believe it was versus Miami, where he had went six innings, thirteen strikeouts, one hit, no earned. Is is this somebody that we should have our you know our eyes out for and be picking up, or was this just one good start from from hers and uh you know it's the nationals and maybe there's there's not a ton of upside here but what do you what are you thinking ray well with uh hers he had uh i believe it was the second best start of the year according to the uh the the rasball uh, top 100 starts uh tool it was it was a really good start on saturday he was uh he he looked excellent. I you know I don't know really other than the changeup. Like it's funny because like you look at his numbers and he's kind of like a changeup first pitcher, and that sort of gets relegated to like the old like you know eh, whatever kind of uh, and for <laughs> fan, for fantasy at least it's yeah, like Kyle Hendricks upside yeah. level. Yeah, like if it's not an overpowering fastball, if it's not Cole Reagan's, then it's like, oh, you know, yeah, he's got a good changeup. Big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> now, it depends on how, um, you know, uh, competitive your fantasy league is because if he throws well in cores this week, he's going to be like, he's going to be snatched up in every league. Like he's going to absolutely be like one of the top pickups. Right now, because no one really believes in him, you know, he was coming. He 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 probably is like you know an afterthought. Even though he pitched really well on Saturday, I don't think people were really that excited about him because you know of the reason I said with the changeup versus the big fastball. So, like, if he pitches well though this week in Coors, he's going to be really like. I mean, people are going to be clamoring. <laughs> They're going to be doing a clamor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> clamor sounds like a word from the uh, 20s. Hey, you know, <laughs> the, the 1920s, that is. Um, so anyway, I I, gra- I would grab him in like, you know, deeper leagues right now just to see if he does well in cores because if he does well in cores, there's you're not going to be able to get him again. So, you know, I would, I would grab him uh, in anticipation, but – I don't know if I'd necessarily start him in cores in uh, most shallower mixed leagues. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're starting most pitchers in cores if you can avoid it, even even as bad as that offense is. Um, but, yeah, DJ Hurst, it's, it's interesting because he's had a high K rate in the minors for being a changeup guy, which, as you mentioned, isn't traditionally a high strikeout type of pitcher. Uh, but also the walks have been really high as well. He's controlled it so far in his, his few starts that he's had the majors. Um, but I would I would probably wait and see on this one. This feels like, uh, you know, he, he was locked in for a start. Good for him. I, I don't believe it's going to continue, and that's, that's kind of the realm I'm throwing him in. Um, Carson Spears is going to get a shot into the Reds rotation. He was part of the uh, fab pickups of, of this last week, which despite all the injuries kind of felt light because there wasn't a whole lot of turnover in those injuries. A lot of go, the replacements were either useless or, or owned. Um, is this somebody who might be, you know, somebody that you're looking at picking up uh, a little bit gray in Carson Spears, 46 and two thirds of AAA this year. He has a two, five, one year, a one of five whip 25 and a half percent K rate, 7.8% walk rate. Where are you at in Carson Spears of the Reds? Yeah, I'm I'm probably I, I don't know. I might end up looking like an idiot for saying this because he's gonna have a, a two start week this week, but I was nowhere near adding him in fab this week. I was I would I wouldn't have added him, <laughs> but you know, some people obviously have uh 
you know, they they want the two star pitcher no matter what. So you know, they 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 added them. I I wouldn't have. I I did not even bid on him. I I don't want to. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Um, you know, with that said, if he pitches well in his two starts this week, he might start getting on. You know, might start moving up on people's radars. But yeah, I, I don't know. His stuff looks really kind of blah. Like uh, he's got. He's got a bunch of pitches. I think he's got like four or five pitches, but it's like, uh, you know, he's got like a pretty blah fastball. Um, I think it's like a 90, 93 mile per hour. Um, he's mostly, you know, he's mostly slider cutter. Um, and his command isn't really that good either. Uh, it, it has been this year so far, but in the past it hasn't been great. So, yeah, I don't know. And a bad ballpark in, uh, in Cincy. I'm not, yeah, I'm probably not messing with Spears in, uh, outside of, you know, NL only, which is, you know, uh, obvious. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you, Gray. I just think you, uh, you leave this one alone. I don't think the upside is worth it. He's not a high K guy. Traditionally, he's had a couple of stops where he's done it, but that's been either limited sample size or like he, he did it in double A last year, but that was after reaching AAA and then getting sent back down. So, like, it, that just seems less impressive as if you've, you know, if you go back a level and dominate. Um, so I, I would agree. It's not really somebody we're looking at here. Let's go on ahead and move to the bullpen gray as we are coming up on, I think we're already past an hour. So in Toronto, that's really the only news of the week. Jimmy Garcia is dealing with some right elbow soreness. Who are you looking at to replace him if he's got to go on the IL? Uh, I think Chad Green is the guy. I, I think the uh, yeah, least, I, I think so. For now, the uh, the Jays, um, John Schneider, the Jays manager, said Chad Green. So yeah, I I would go him and you know see where that goes. He's been good though so far this year. So hopefully he stays good in the ninth inning. Yeah, I can see Tim Mesa getting a, a chance if it's a lefty heavy ninth. Um, He's been good lately, but I, I would agree. It's Chad Green. If you're going to grab anybody, give the give the people some wave wire bats, Gray. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Tyler Soderstrom, uh, Oakland A's uh, first baseman. Also, I think he has catcher eligibility in some leagues. He's been he's been crazy hot. Probably one of the hottest bats in uh, the majors right now. Um, you know, people were asking about him versus like David Fry, who was a hot pickup uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, yeah, we're moving on. We're moving on from David Fry. We're, <laughs> this is us moving, man. We're, uh, we're, on, we're on the roll. Uh, Carlos Correa has been crazy hot. I think he's probably rostered in most leagues. I'm not sure, but in at least 12 team mixed leagues and deeper. I think Correa has probably been rostered. And if he and if he's not, then he's been, you know, crazy hot as well. Carlos Santana, uh, you know, he he had a good um Sunday. I think he hit a homer. I think he even stole a base. Uh so he had a good Sunday. He's had a good week though. He he's been hot. Um Jackson Merrill, uh First time he's hit since uh, the South Korea series. Now, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, <laughs> but but he hasn't been great uh, outside of the South Korea series. But he was great this past week. So yeah, he's been hot. Uh, Jose Trevino, Yankees catcher. I don't know why he's not just catching every day, but I think they're platooning him and Austin Wells still. Anyway, Trevino has been hot. Um, Willie Castro has been hot. Actually, everyone on the Twins has been hot. Uh, for the last week, Austin Slater, Giants outfielder, he's been hot. Um, Joey Menez, um, Nationals uh, DH, been hot. And then Hunter Goodman actually has been kind of hot. Uh, Rockies outfielder, I think he hit two homers the other day. Um, and then uh, let's see, Nolan Chanel has also been a little bit hot uh, recently. Angels uh, first baseman hitting leadoff. Uh, against righties. Yeah. All right. Uh, over to some streaming options for pitching. Uh, Miles Mikolas has gotten it together after a horrific start to the season. He's versus San Francisco. Tobias Myers is a two-starter at the Angels and at San Diego. 
Kyle Gibson at at Miami and maybe versus San Francisco instead. I don't he's on the bereavement, so it depends on when he comes back, whether he gets at Miami versus San Francisco. Either way, if it's a weekly, you could start him because not scared about either of those matchups. Jamison Tyon versus the Mets. Hogan Harris gets two starts versus Kansas City and versus Minnesota. Logan Allen versus Seattle. Uh, if Cody Poteet stays in the rotation, I believe he's going versus Baltimore. They could leave him in as they have six starts this week and then kind of kick him out next week. Trevor Rogers versus Seattle. Dane Dunning versus Kansas City if he stays in the rotation. Ryan Nelson at Washington and uh, Gray's favorite, Andrew Heaney at the Mets. <laughs> Uh, he's been he's been solid all year, Gray. It's not been uh, it's not been like uh, anything fun, but like uh, you know, he's been Andrew Heaney in his way through it. I, I have uh, I have Andrew Heaney t a uh, post Andrew Heaney stress disorder. I can't I can't go near Andrew Heaney, but you know, good good luck to you if you do. Hey, you know, if you're in those leagues where he's out there and that's the best option you got. I do think you could do worse than him going uh, versus the Mets. Seems like the right place there. Um, but if you know that's my if that's the that's one matchup what, uh, of the week that get, that gets lit up, so be it, Gray. That's what uh, that's what he wants you to think. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're plotting behind us, Gray. But uh, if you have any other questions after uh, you listen to me recommend Andrew Heaney, you can still come to us on Twitter. I'm at Razbedon. Gray is at Razball. Come to us on youtube.com slash Razball Fantasy, and you can leave comments there in the videos. Uh, wherever you get your podcast, rate, review, that always helps us. Until next week, good luck in your matchups. I'll talk to you later, Greg. All right, ladies.